Dear God, Jack Church here. Greetings from planet Earth. You know about Earth, that place you created, as well as the heavens, the night and the day, the Alpha and the Omega. Well, we're still down here. The Earth is still spinning. And my head is spinning. God, I decided to write you a letter because I really would like to hear from you. Now, you know, I have this thing called Love Letters to Pam where I write her letters all the time. I don't really hear from her. And I don't seem like I hear from you a lot, God. Now, I know people talk about getting signs and things that happen that can only be God. And I've actually said that myself. I'll go, that was a God moment. That had to be God. But I'm kind of reaching a point where I'd love to actually hear your voice. I'd like to actually hear you say, Hey, Jack, God here. You know that question you asked me the other day? Then again, maybe when you're talking to me, you'll have a southern accent. Hey, Jack, God here. That question you answered me, you know, asked me the other day. Well, here's the answer. God, that's what I'm saying. I know we have the scriptures to live by. And I know that you died on the cross for our sins. And I believe you did that. I believe in you. I believe in the Holy Trinity. And I believe that I will go to heaven one day. But here's the deal, God. It just seems like oftentimes we're not hearing from you. Things are a mess down here on earth, Lord. People fight over the simplest things now. It's just absolutely incredible. And I know you got to be shaking your head. I mean, we got countries bombing one another. We got just things that are happening that are just crazy here in our own country, the United States. You know, Lord, it's, it's just getting time that you got to come back. I know it's been over 2,000 years now, and my question is, what are you waiting on? In fact, I've asked, what are you waiting on about a lot of things lately? I heard a sermon in church where the pastor was talking about if we pray for things. He talked about pray fervently. I believe, I believe that's the word. You know, pray without ceasing and God will hear you and God will answer your prayers. And I think back to when Pam first got diagnosed with cancer in her bones. My gosh, we prayed. We prayed without ceasing. Our kids prayed without ceasing. Our family prayed without ceasing. Our friends prayed without ceasing. People all around the country. We had people went to the whaling wall overseas and prayed for Pam while they were on trips there. And in the end, you didn't give me the answer we were looking for, Lord. I know you healed her. You did it in heaven. The question is, why didn't you heal her here? She was still pretty young. And then that's where things really get kind of crazy, Lord. I think about all the people who live so much longer. And then you take a lot of people so much younger. I just wish you would talk to us, you know, audibly where we actually heard you. Now, I know, again, Bible scholars and people like that, they tell us to look to the scriptures for the answers. Now, that's where things really get a little confusing. A lot of the time in the Bible, you talk in what are called parables. Sometimes to me, they're like riddles. I read and I read and I think I understand. Then I go, huh? What were you trying to say there? God, you, you didn't give us the easiest book to go by. Uh, they have done revisions to it, lots of different ones. There's lots of different interpretations of the Bible. And then you kind of get back to going, well, which one's the right one? And there'll be uh, people will say, well, the King James Version, that's the right one. Then there's other people, the New American Standard, all these different ones. God, it's just confusing. It's just hard. And, you know, and in terms of this letter that I'm writing you, it's actually in video. And, you know, you talk about all seeing, all knowing, all hearing, all that good stuff. So I'm going to guess you can look at YouTube or maybe you're just looking at me right now when I'm recording this. But God, I'm just asking for answers. I'm asking for audible answers. I think the entire planet of Earth wants to hear you actually speak. Now, there'll be, again, a lot of religious leaders, uh, a lot of Christians and such who will look at this and they'll start commenting going, you just got to listen. You got to hear the voice of God. <sighs> I get it. And there are times that I think I hear the voice of God. But lots of times, you know, and I've heard some pastors talk about that intuition that you have, that little knot in your stomach or that gut feeling that sometimes that's God talking to you. Okay, good. Made a lot of moves based on that. But I still would just like to hear you talk. Just talk to us, God. That's all I'm asking. And when it talks about you know, they talk about your prayers will always be answered, but sometimes maybe like, maybe not like you want them to be answered. I don't get that one either. 
Because man, there have been some prayers over the years that, that yeah, I, I guess they were answered. They were not answered anywhere close to what I was thinking. And we live with the consequences. And then we kind of pick up the pieces and try and do better, make things better with your help. Now somebody says, well, what do I pray for? Well, one big prayer that I have every night before I go to bed is, Lord, if this is the night that I don't wake up tomorrow morning here on earth, I'm good with that. I want to wake up in heaven, see you, see all of our relatives, see Pam, see all the people that went before us. That's my number one prayer. And then people will go, well, what about your kids? What about, you know, your friends, your relatives, things like that? Well, the, the reality is I'm probably not, not going to outlive my kids, especially. I certainly hope not. Unfortunately, some parents do. And that's a sad thing, too. God, that's another one of those questions we're asking. Why do you take kids sometimes before the parents? Especially little kids. Can you explain that to us? Of course... I guess I could be selfish and go, you took Pam early because she certainly was a good one. I had a friend of mine the other day say that, you know, Pam in a crowd might not have actually just stood out before everyone. But they said, when you got to know Pam, she was the kindest, gentlest, most caring person you have ever met. They said she had Christ-like features. And I agree with that. So maybe that's why you called her up to heaven, God. Maybe you've got her in that... Uh, uh, discipleship, discipleship Training 101 program you got going up there, and then all of you are going to come back. Well, God, we're ready for you to come back. It's a wreck down here. And I don't think, I know you made man, you made woman, you made the earth, but we have really messed it up. And I'm not sure that we can fix it. I know we can't. You've got to fix it. So I'm joining, I think probably millions would agree with me in saying, God, hear my letter. Come on back now, okay? In whatever language you speak. Of course, I guess you know every language on earth. For me, let's go with the southern one, you know? Let's go with, hey, Jack, God here. Good news. I'll be by your house about 8.30 in the morning to pick you up, and we're going to head up to heaven, and it's going to be a wonderful ride. And you're going to see everybody went ahead of you. Then I'll come back. I'll get your kids, get the rest of the relatives, get all the others who believed in me. We're all going to get up to heaven and have a big old party. Lord, man, that would be great. And I'm not making light of any of this, God. This is really my prayer tonight, today, tomorrow, the day after. So thank you, God, for listening. I really appreciate it. P.S. Say hey to Pam and all the others up there. Bye now and sincerely yours, Jack.